save 10% with my code Bobby10. Just kidding, guys. Today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, fascinating video today. We're going to react to the problem of evil. Why does God allow suffering? The best answer by towards eternity. Guys, even back in the day, my Christian days, but especially now that I reverted to Islam, atheists love to pose the question, how can there be a God if there is evil? So this is a reoccurring theme that those people simply cannot wrap their heads around. For the atheist mind, it is absolutely impossible that a God actually exist. However, at the same time, they will tell you that everything around them is evil. If you look at this mindset, this is the perfect description of not submitting to God, of rebelling against God. An atheist that does not accept God is obviously in rebellion against God. And this is why he or she suffers continuously. And this is why they cannot see the beauty in the world. They cannot understand that there is a maker behind everything. They are stuck in their perspective of everything is evil around me. I'm very curious to see the best answer today in this video. With no further ado, let's have a look. The diseases, evils, and calamities that happen to us They beg the question, why does Allah allow these bad things to happen? Atheists say, if there is a creator, then he wouldn't have allowed such calamities to happen. Exactly. But is it really so? No. First of all, we should start by Spoiler. saying that the existence of evil in the universe cannot be proof for the absence of a creator that is Allah. Why? For example, let's imagine a museum or an exhibition space. Depending on their interests, the people that are visiting them may or may not like the works inside. When someone who doesn't know anything about painting sees a famous and valuable work, they would say, this painting doesn't make any sense. I only see irregular and chaotic lines here. However, for someone who knows about paintings, that work has excellent features and has many meanings behind every detail. Yes, someone who does not understand art may not like the work, but they cannot say this work doesn't have an artist. 
The fact that a work is found ugly. Sure, this is an okay example, but because we're talking about suffering, I would rather choose another one. For example, you go to a cinema and you see a horror movie and there's obviously so much torture, so much horrendous stuff happening during this movie. And therefore you decide this movie is so evil, there cannot be a director behind it. it cannot be proof of the absence of the artist. Just like that, the fact that a person who is looking at the universe finds some calamities ugly or that he does not like the diseases that are happening to him and cannot understand the reasons behind them is not proof for the absence of the artist. That is a law. Because even saying that there is ugliness indicates an artist. So an atheist cannot claim the absence of God by pointing out the calamities. Then what is the reason why human beings struggle with all these catastrophes? Let's take a look at this. Moreover, yet again, this ugliness is subjective. So the atheists think that something that is occurring is ugly. I might think that somebody is ugly, but that somebody might be somebody's wife and he finds her pretty. So this is just subjective. I personally love sushi. Other people find it yucky. They find it disgusting to eat raw fish, so on and so forth. This is just subjective. The question is, of course, is there an objective truth? truth. We say yes, there is an objective truth and an objective standard of morality and this is God. We have a limited finite perception. Even an atheist will agree to this that we have a finite perception. We cannot potentially know the secrets of the universe. Our brain is limited. An atheist will agree to that and this is why I always come up with the same example of the kid and the father. I am a father. I have a son. My son loves to eat candies. Let's just feed him candy all day long. Hey, I'm such a good loving father because as long as I'm a good loving father or at least something that my kid would interpret as a good loving father, hey, then this is proof for the existence of a father. But God forbid if I say, hey, kid, stop eating that chocolate, give it to me and eat your meats. Ooh, this is proof now that no father exists. That doesn't make any sense, of course. So what I want to tell you with this example is that my son, he's not even two years old, has of course a limited perception. He doesn't understand that I want the best for him. And taking away the pleasure right now and causing suffering is the best thing I can do as a father. And therefore, in this short, brief moment of time, when we are suffering, when something bad is happening, we have absolutely no clue what the true implication is. And as Muslims, we submit our will to God and we say that this is Qadr Allah, that this is the will of God and therefore it is good. You can assess if something is flawed or perfect by looking at the purpose for which it was made. If something works well in accordance with its purpose, we can say it is of good quality, it is nice. If it doesn't work as intended, we say that it is ugly and flawed. For example, the purpose of a library is to provide a quiet and peaceful environment for people to work. Now, could someone who visits a library for the first time after observing the place and not liking the silence say things like, why is this place so quiet? Why is there no movement? No one's talking. What a faulty and flawed design. Could he criticize it like that? Of course not. Because the library is supposed to be an environment that requires silence. It's its purpose. So the fact that the library is quiet indicates that it is a quality and beautiful library. Or imagine a gym. Someone is visiting here for the first time and sees that the people are tired and sweaty. Lying on the floor exhausted, could he say things like, That's Who a good is gym. persecuting these people? What a pity. What a cruel and flawed environment. Of course they couldn't, because the purpose of this place is to make people physically improve themselves through struggle. Just like in these examples, that this universe example. has certain purposes. We can understand whether the events in the universe are good or bad by looking at the purpose of the universe. Recognizing the names of Allah comes first among these purposes. Many other items can be counted, such as progressing by struggle with trials, by passing the test of patience. If we look at the universe according to these purposes, then it is necessary to have troubles, calamities, and diseases. For example, if there were no diseases, could we know the name of Allah, Shafi, or the name Razak? If there was no hunger, if there were no tests of gratitude and patience, could spiritual progress be achieved? No. Then the universe and the events which we call calamities... This is a great description and of course the gym example resonates with me because in the gym when I joined it with 16 years of age, almost 20 years ago, I understood 
understood clearly that something beautiful can only emerge from struggling, from suffering. And if you inflict suffering upon yourself, you get the reward directly. If you do not impose any type of suffering on you, God will make you suffer. God loves discipline, it appears. If I wake up every morning for Fajr prayer and then I go to the gym, then I eat healthy, I abstain from all the vices, this is suffering that I'm putting myself upon. But if I choose not to suffer, I'm just going to sit on the couch and eat what I want. Guess what? A few years down the line, now I'm going to suffer a heart attack. I'm going to suffer obesity and what not. Suffering is an intrinsic part of the game, but that does not mean that we have to psychologically suffer. Of course not. As I said, if we submit ourselves to God, there is no suffering in our minds because we understand that this is a test. We endure the suffering and we are grateful for it. Then the universe not like the atheist that is complaining all the time. Uh, to get to suffering, know Allah suffering. And to rank up through struggle. Therefore, we cannot yes. look at these events as flaws and evils. If such calamities were to occur in heaven and not on earth, then we would be able to say, this place is bad. There is ugliness here. Because heaven is a place of goodness and reward, the world, on the other hand, is a place of trial. We think about the concept of finding a flaw in light of this purpose that we've explained. We can say that. An atheist who does not know the purpose of the universe and even thinks that it is purposeless certainly would not be able to evaluate whether these calamities are good or bad. Because if the purpose is not known, the event cannot be interpreted correctly. Exactly right. Because they have absolutely no foundation for their metaphysical claims. If you say that something is evil, you're already implementing some standard of good and bad. At the same time, the atheist will tell you that everything is relative. There is no good and bad. So if there is no good and bad, how can you then assess and judge that something is bad? If you look at famous atheists such as Sam Harris, he will tell you, I don't have to tell you that it is bad when I poison a village in Africa. It simply is. What does that even mean? How is it simply bad? If you don't have right and wrong, an universal standard, then this is just your opinion. For you, it is bad and maybe for the majority of people. Congratulations, now you have an appeal to majority fallacy. If you look at a psychopath, on the other hand, he might think, hey, this is a fantastic Tuesday. Let's poison all the villages in Africa. Africa. Don't you understand this yet again a subjective perspective? The verse is beautiful. Yes, something is either beautiful in and of itself or it's beautiful in terms of its result. Even many issues that we think of as evil have many beauties in terms of their results. When a man with his selfish nature sees an event that does not benefit him, he immediately defines it as bad. However, if the event benefits all humanity and has a common benefit, we can say that the event is good. For example, someone who doesn't like the winter and is always sick in that period cannot say, I get harmed, I don't like the winter. Therefore, the winter season is a flaw, it's an ugliness. Because if we look at the result, the winter is indispensable for life. It would be a mistake to evaluate the winter as bad with personal interpretation. Similarly, if we look at calamities, diseases, not with a personal interpretation, but from the perspective of the general benefits as their results, we will see that there are a lot of wisdom and benefits behind them. Let's elaborate yes, on these general absolutely. benefits. absolutely. That's what I'm saying. It is subjective. Those people lack an objective standard. They cannot see the greater good. They only see their subjective evil, their subjective bad. And this is why they say God does not exist. They're like children. It's unbelievable. In fact, the thing that distinguishes beauty is the presence of ugliness because everything is known through its opposite. True. For example, if there is no cold, the heat cannot be known. Exactly. Without darkness, light cannot be known. True. Similarly, the events that we describe as disorder, evil, and ugliness are actually matters that enable us to realize the order, goodness, and beauty. I mean, think about it. Imagine if there was no ugliness. Could we speak of beauty? Or could we speak of order where there was no disorder? No. So the existence of opposite concepts is necessary to understand beauty. A person who is constantly living in order and beauty can no longer understand the value of that order and beauty. We Which makes it even more beautiful and puts you into awe, of course, that you see that such a universe has been created. It's not only about bliss, only about pleasure, but it has everything, every nuance, every color of the spectrum is to be seen here, is to be witnessed. You can build a family, you can be left alone, you understand what loneliness is you can win, you can lose. All of those experiences can be made in this amazing creation. Beauty. We can evaluate natural events such as earthquakes in this manner. For example, earthquakes can seem evil. It is an event that shakes the earth intensely and is considered to be a of calamity. Course. 
At face value, it may be perceived as very harmful in a disorder, but in fact the thing that tells us what the order is are these earthquakes. Yes, earthquakes remind people that the earth does not shake on normal days and makes us feel that such an orderly and stable earth is actually a blessing. They make people who True. are used to normal conditions realize that even the things that they think is normal are in fact blessings. Yes, the yes. thing that makes us notice the order is the disorder. The thing that makes the beauty beautiful is the ugliness of the ugly. So even the matters that are assumed to be disordered are in fact beautiful. And this is something that I learned throughout my spiritual experiences. Yet again, disclaimer, please do not touch those substances. And moreover, I'm not saying that therefore it is right or wrong. It is simply my perspective. That being said, I had certain experiences in which I saw that everything is perfect and that everything that does not appear perfect to me, even the slightest randomness, like somebody stuttering, some people scratching themselves, something that seems so random, somebody stumbling forward, not knowing what to say. All of this seems so random, but even this randomness is created by Allah and therefore it is perfect. Another point is that constant beauty makes the people nuance. forget the hereafter by making them heedless. It makes the world look beautiful and intoxicate people. For a person who forgets his duty and forgets the hereafter, troubles are actually a warning and a wake-up call. An intoxicated person cannot be aware of the events around him. One could make unlikely mistakes thinking that they are doing the right thing. At that point, someone should wake him up to reality. Waking him up would be the greatest favor done to him. Just like that, the human being who was sent to the world to know Allah sometimes forgets his duty. Contrary to his mission, he can become immersed in extremely insignificant things. Some days, he forgets the taste of praying. Some days, he falls into sin in such a way that he even forgets what it means to regret. Actually, Absolutely. at this point, he needs someone to wake him up from that state. In reality, it's not evil that Allah wakes him up from his heedless, sinful state with calamities and diseases, but it's pure mercy and beauty. Because think about it, whoever experiences a problem starts thinking more about the hereafter compared to other people and he turns to worship. So even from this point of view, we should see calamities not- I have goosebumps listening to this because 2011, over 10 years ago, I was struck with a terrible sickness or at least terrible the way that I interpreted it. Looking back now, I'm happy for that sickness because it brought me out of the degenerate lifestyle that I was living, partying, multiple women and what not pure degeneracy but i thought that this is the peak of existence i thought that partying is our birthright hey let's have so much fun but ultimately i was destroying myself with substances and what not only that sickness brought me out of that degeneracy and one step closer to god it is evil but has blessings to be thankful for human logic is in constant improvement the human being who always understands the logic of the events later on tries to learn what is beneficial and what is harmful throughout his life. Sometimes he can assume the beneficial matters and warnings to be harmful. For example, the slap of a mother to avoid her child from touching the stove is actually a blessing for him. The child isn't aware of this. He can neither recognize the danger of the stove, nor can he immediately understand the reason for the slap. Well, cry. When he understands the danger of the burning stove later on, he realizes that the slap was actually a result of compassion. Yep. Yes, if we look Later. at it from the point of view of mercy, in a real sense, there is no ugliness in evil. Just like in these examples, there may be some warnings that Allah sends in our way. Sometimes we don't understand them. We may think of them as bad things, but in fact, it's the opposite. It's an act of pure mercy. Sometimes it takes time for us to realize this. Just think about it, thinking that even the slap of a mother had a benefit. How can there be no mercy in a warning that is sent by Allah? who showers the human beings with so many blessings with his infinite love and care. Yes, brothers, man is a soldier on duty who is trying to understand the universe and get to know Allah. Think about the blessings of Allah and the fact that he created so many beauties. As the one who gives the feeling of compassion to all the mothers, would Allah ever intend any harm to you in a real sense? As the one who puts benefit in all things and manages everything with wisdom, would Allah ever create disorganized and useless matters? Sometimes we need to change our perspective. We have to evaluate things holistically. 
Alright guys, and this is it for today's video, especially in the end here, beautifully put, because the question was, would God intend any real harm onto us? If you really think about it from a theological perspective, you will see that the answer is no, because we are not this body, as the atheist want to tell us. The atheist thinks we are our body, and if something bad happens to my body, then it equals evil. But if you think of yourself as a soul in a body, then no pain in the world can be real to you. This is just a test. Even, yet again, from an atheistic perspective, if you believe in video games and you understand the purpose of those games, you understand that you are playing a character in that game and your character cannot truly die. Even if the character in the game dies, you are still alive. This is the way that we see the body. This is a temporary time frame. A few years in this world and then we are leaving again. Our soul stays unharmed as long as we redirect our worship away from the creation onto the creator. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. To all my brothers and sisters fasting with me, I wish you all the strengths and all the blessings in the world. We're all struggling together. I'm recording this video right now with no sip of water, and I have a few more to go. God bless you all. All right, guys, but this is it. And as always, yet again, May God bless you all, much love and peace.